Hello, welcome. This is science part two out of three. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends. And as always, these science videos are edited by my good friend and teammate, Peter Zhang. So you can check out his organization in the link down below. Now, next up is the idea of air conditioning. How it works is actually relatively simple. You first have a liquid such as ammonia, which can easily turn into a gas when heated up. The liquid goes in a cycle, first entering your hot room where the hot air is fanned to the liquid, and thus heating up the liquid and removing heat from your room. Since energy is transferred from hot to cold, the colder aspect of your room, or this ammonia liquid, uh, gets heated up. The liquid then turns into a gas once it's heated up enough and the gas is compressed into a liquid where all the remnants are basically left to the air and the heat escapes your roof. Now how heating works is that there's something called a burner assembly which basically heats up with propane. It's this very hot metal that I wouldn't suggest you touch. And in most heaters there's a fan that blows um, air onto the heat assembly which ends up heating the air. The purpose of this hot unit is to heat up air when air is ventilated through it, which is basically what the burner assembly does. From an environmental uh, global warming standpoint, it is actually worse to heat up a cold place than it is to cool a hot place, mainly because these burner assemblies through the use of propane release something called carbon monoxide, which accounts for approximately 7-10% to of all the greenhouse gases emitted into our atmosphere. Now there are various types of air purifiers. How they work is that they fan in air, and once the air is inside the purifier, it purifies it somehow, and then spits out the air. The first type of um, air purifier extracts the dust particles completely from the air. This includes activated carbon, which removes um, all the smell and all the dust from the air by using electrostatic attraction. Ionizing purifiers do not extract um, dust and particulate from the air, but instead makes them uh, electrostatically charged, which causes them to stick to the ground instead of going through the system. Some materials such as fiberglass actually block the particles from exiting the, um, the purifier once the air ventilates through it. Next in the curriculum is home automation machine, that actually these, which are devices that actually do a lot of the work for you in the house. For example, things such as a controlled climate, your entertainment, or even your lightning is controlled by the Internet of Things or just wireless data or AI that make these technologies much smarter. Next up is dishwashers, which uses the spraying of hot water up to degrees of 45 to 75 Celsius uh, to clean dishes. You'd actually be surprised as a bunch of, as people have actually cooked food in dishwashers. Don't ask me how. The first dishwashing machine, which was actually hand pan powered, was invented in the 1850s in the US. The later one, the electric uh, dishwasher was invented in 1929. Greatly reduced the time we spent washing our dishes, but came with the cost of high energy and high water consumption. Next up is home robots, which are these automated machinery that assist with housework, such as a robotic vacuum cleaner or a robotic floor sweeper. It was first popularized by the vacuum cleaner iRobot Roomba in 2002. Although automated robots are becoming more popular every, every single day and every single year, um, they can still only do relatively simple tasks, such as mow your lawn or clean the floor. Microwaves, which simply put is a product that uses something called a magnetron that emits electromagnetic radiation in the form of microwaves to heat up your food. Basically, if the material does not have any water in it, the microwave won't heat it up. It was first introduced and developed as a byproduct of World War II uh, research, and despite the popular myths, microwaves won't give you cancer. Toasters. Now, how they work is relatively simple. An electrical current is, spent, is sent through a special type of wire, normally a uh, nichrome uh, 8020, and then the wire starts radiating heat. And if you ever looked inside a toaster when it's like heating up, you'll notice that the wires start turning uh, like an orange, dark red. That's because heat is being radiated from it. Before this invention, you actually had to heat up toast by putting it over like a frying pan over a fire or just using a stick like you're roasting marshmallows, you know? Next is the convection oven, which is an oven you have in your kitchen to bake cakes, 
um, meat, and every anything else you want to eat. Works by using the circulation of air. Simply put, the oven fan would send in hot air uh, into the oven, and then the hot air would start getting even hotter because um, the air is all trapped, and it helped um, with the even cooking of food. Instead of an uneven way of cooking a food, which was to put like a cake over a fire, this convection system sends hot air towards the food, which helps for a much a much faster and more efficient cooking process. Now, a rice cooker conveniently cooks up your rice. I mean, who could have guessed? Um, it works similar to a microwave, where um, it starts heating up the water inside of the rice cooker, and then a thermostat controls the temperature. Now on to coffee machine. Now how this one works is that water below the machine is heated up to a constant temperature of 93 Celsius, where it starts creating air bubbles. The air bubbles rise up through a thin tube and start actually um, raising hot water up. The water reaches a ceiling where it's condensed back into water drops. They fall down through the coffee oils, picking through the coffee beans, picking up any coffee oils, and then that turns into coffee that you would drink in your cup. This is called the electric drip brewer. This coffee maker uh, heats up water above a heat source and then the water travels up a thin tube to drip into ground coffee, then drip back into the heating container. Next is the cafeterie, which is a type of coffee maker also known as the French press, where the ground coffee is brewed within the water, then lifted out of the water. Finally, the coffee maker used in your houses today in our society is called the single serve, which is a single serving uh, basically pads with um, uh, coffee bean powder and then hot water runs through them and into your cup. Uh, the hot water again is used by the electric drip brewer mechanism, but what's cool about this type of method is that you just buy like the little cups, little pad things, and you can just buy a packet and use it over and over again instead of getting new coffee beans from like your Starbucks coffee barrel that you have in your basement. Now onto our next kitchen appliance, um, the electric um, juice maker or the smoothie blender I guess you can make, which basically uh, makes these very good smoothies or juices by cutting up um, fruits and vegetables that you add into the, the bowl, basically with a spinning metal mechanism that turns fruits into juice. Next is a pressure cooker, um, which uses higher than atmospheric uh, pressures in a sealed container to speed up the cooking of food. As you might know from your physics class, having a higher pressurized area also means that area is going to be a lot harder and it's going to have higher temperatures. So what this does is it cooks um, food at higher temperatures much faster without the use of boiling water or steam. Older generations of pressure cookers are used over a fire and have a steam valve, while newer cookers are electric and use electric heating adjustments to control pressure. Now a magnetic stove is a system that heats cookware by um, heating up basically using electromagnetic induction by creating a small current inside the metal cookware. Then the cookware heats up inside like an electric uh, heater due to electrical resistance and allows for an, a rapid increase in temperature, high efficiency, low waste heat, and a greater simplicity for the cooktop. Now onto personal grooming with the first one being the hair dryer, which obviously dries up your hair. It does this by using a power fan as well as many of the similar um, heating electrical coils used in a toaster where the coil is heated up and then hot air is blown onto your hot air is blown onto your hair. The first model was invented in 1860 and was this huge seat massage chair looking thing. In the year 1950, the handheld version started to become popular. However, the main problem was that um, millions of people were getting electrocuted by this. But since 1991, uh, all of these hair dryers now have a grounded component, which help make um, electrocution very rare. Next up is the hair straightener, which uses a heated up surface to change the physical appearance of hair. It's usually to reduce or create curling. It was first conceptually invented in 1872 by Erica Fieldman and was popularized in the 1950s. It works by forming temporary hydrogen bonds or intermolecular bonds within the hair structure as it's temporarily heated. Waxing, a technique to remove hair from the skin by simply a resin-like material to remove the root of skin and then removing it really quickly to like rip out the roots of your hair and your, your face and wherever else you use this. The first recorded use was in Egypt around the year uh, 1150 BC and it was used by a woman of the ruling class. Wealthy Roman men 
uh, also utilize waxing. Two different types of waxing. Uh, one that requires a thinner layer, thinner layer of adhesive paper uh, to help remove hair, also known as strip waxing, and the other one that uses a thicker adhesive, basically that hardens, or also known as hard wax. And of course the toothbrush, which I don't think I really need to talk about because hopefully all of you brush your teeth, and if you don't, it's kind of disgusting, bro. Well, it's a device used to maintain oral hygiene by cleaning um, gum and tongue. It consists of a handle and bristle on one end. The bristles clean the teeth by removing uh, food, residue, and bacteria. The oldest recorded artifacts um, of the toothbrush that resemble the modern day uh, stick with the bristles at the end was found in China in the Tang Dynasty, which uh, used hog furs to clean your teeth. Europeans started importing toothbrushes from China in the 17th century and even start, started making their own with uh, softer horse hair. Next up is dirty jobs, which uh, these enabling technologies have made it much easier to perform and do these dirty works. Now the first technology we overlook basically every day is uh, plumbing. Just to scare you, the water you're drinking from the tap could have very well been someone's urine uh, just a month ago. <sighs> First, water enters the household through the city clean um, piping system and it's separated into two different tanks. One tank that heats up the water and the other one that just leaves the water at room temperature. From there, the water is uh, split up into subsections and subsystems which uh, basically move the water around using pressure. Then waste goes through another system called the DWV. Uh, which stands for um, drain, waste, and vent, with vent actually being the air that gets trapped between the pipes that has to be filtered out through another system. The waste is pulled all the way down to the sewer using gravity. No pressure needed here. It then goes through the local sewer um, where the waste is deposed and filtrated multiple times by bacteria and machines that basically turn it into a liquid. At this stage, the liquid is separated away from the solid where the solid is used as fertilizer and then the liquid keeps getting eaten by the bacteria. It's continuously processed until it's almost clean and then chlorine is added into the water to kill off the bacteria where it's filtered multiple times through uh, machines and then where it either goes to the local, uh, where to your local drinking station or um, to some marshland and back into drinking water basically. Yeah, now that I think about it, this this actually had a very like long and tough journey. Oh yeah. Mm. Now high tech toilets, which are these Japanese toilets created uh, primarily by Toto. What is interesting about these uh, toilets is that they are starting to incorporate many features that are uh, making toilet paper very irrelevant. One of the main motivation is just the amount of smell that is Next up is trenchless sewers, which is a very convenient way to replace broken down and old PCB pipes. And finally, paper towel dispensers, which basically use a motion detector uh, to signal when paper should fall down and you should like, you know, wash your hands. So now in China, they added this face sensor recognition system, uh, basically in tourist locations. Uh, to prevent locals from stealing toilet paper and using it for themselves. So basically, if you want to like get toilet paper, you have to like scan your face, get some paper, and then you know do your thing. And then you have to wait again to scan your face at least like 10 minutes, or like someone's gonna come and like take you out. That way you don't like hog all the paper. And, and now in Moscow, the plumbing system is just it's it's something else. It's like 10 out of 10. I mean, on a scale of good to bad. They're somewhere. I say this because um, according to this article on the Scholar Scott curriculum, in summer, the uh, basically the hot water just doesn't work in Moscow. This is because the water is heated up in a specific facility, then sent over to people's houses instead of the water being heated directly in people's houses like here in Canada and the United States and basically everywhere else. Since the plumbing system was created in the Soviet Union, uh, it doesn't work as well as you expect, so they spend all summer basically trying to repair it and fix it up and uh, basically making shutting down facilities and making the hot water not available. Now to the pest industry. Um, what's interesting is that they created this laser type machine that shoots down pests um, from eating oranges in Florida. Uh, the pest is called Asian Citrus uh, Pisolid and it's eating half of the oranges in Florida. So to take care of this pest, they created this laser shooting uh, device. I mean, you ever thought of this idea? 
Good job, actually. I see many challenges with this, such as what if the pest flew in front of a person would like the person get lasered? Manufacturing. Now, an assembly line is a manufacturing pod product process where parts are added to an unfinished product in sequence in different stations. This, this allows for high efficiency and basically unskilled workers who just have to perform their one task at any given station. The first fully functioning linear and flowing assembly process was created in 1803, um, which was used in building pulley blocks for controlling sails for the Royal Navy in Britain. And finally, the last term um, for the science part two out of three is called the prime mover. This is an object that acts as the source of the motive power. Basically, it converts gas or whatever else you put into your car into um, shaft power or electrical energy, which helps your car move forward. So that is it for science part two out of three. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something and I hope you apply what you've learned to your challenge to help you become more successful. And if you found this video helpful, Please subscribe down below, share it with your friends, give it a like, comment down below, just, you know, support, support my, my artwork. And as always, these science videos are edited by my friend Peter, so you can check out his um, rocket organization in the links down below. And until next time, stay productive. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.